Hey everybody, standing in the magical afterglow of our Wednesday, October 31st talk show, so happy Halloween everyone. I've clearly come dressed as a conservative talk show host with just the right combination of nervousness and confidence about an election day that is six days away. But for a minute, I want you to go into the time tunnel with me and let's go back, call it 10 years. Imagine yourself, we're all together in some room in Hollywood where somebody is uh, pitching a script of some kind. And there's some skeptical producer who has a lot of money to give to just the right project. And you or I, we come in and, and we say, hey, I've got this great idea. Okay, what is it? And we begin. A, a largely unknown figure, kind of an exotic, uh, nebulous soul, uh, picks up a breeze of rock star adulation and vaults himself to the presidency. But the bloom sort of comes off the rose pretty quickly as the economy swirls eternally in the toilet. And by the end of the first term, things aren't going so great. Along comes an alternative, a Republican multimillionaire with matinee idol good looks. And things go neck and neck, and nobody knows exactly how things are going to go. But then there's horrible violence at an American consulate in the Middle East, and our ambassador is killed. And some of the media are covering it, and some of the media are not. And there's a big nebulous cloud there as to how big the story is. And the election gets closer and closer and closer. And then a hurricane eats the East Coast. And then it's at this point you get interrupted. Wouldn't you think? It's like, no, 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 no. What? Really? Really? Uh, I mean, at the school for bad script writing, this would get thrown out. And yet, here we are, living it. So what's likely to happen in the next uh, five, six, four, however many days are left when you're watching this? Sometimes when things are swirling so crazily around you, whether literally like the winds of Hurricane Sandy or metaphorically like the storylines of this campaign, you cling to things that you've known historically. Historically, uh, the, they say the last poll belongs to the incumbent, meaning that the, the last polls that are taken, which are going to be like any minute now, are probably going to favor Obama you know, by a, a point maybe two more than they should. And then there's something that I've told you about as a phenomenon for a really, really long time. I don't think that the polls are gathering the truth. And before you say, oh, that's just because, you know, you want Romney to win and you don't, no, 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 no. I knew the polls were probably right with regard to McCain and Obama. I knew we were going to lose. I knew the polls were right in 1996 when Bob Dole was going to get waxed by Bill Clinton. When we're going to lose, I know it. And I'm not telling you that I know we're going to win, but I think there's something going on here that after year after year after year of not just psychopaths like Chris Matthews, but an entire dominant media culture telling you that if you don't like Obama, if you're not totally on board for that uh, radical left leftist agenda. You just don't like black people. And it's the same kind of the leftist narrative that says that if you don't absolutely embrace uh, legal, equal legal status for, for gay unions, that must be because you hate gay people. And, and if you are skeptical about man-made global warming, that must mean you hate the planet. Uh, these people are going to lose this election, but they've won the arguments. They've won the narrative for the last few years. So I believe that's created, even if it's just this many people, who when faced with a pollster to say, who do you like for president? Some, some, it doesn't take many, will go, Obama, when they really don't. I don't mean they're hardcore Romney voters, but maybe they are in fact non-voters who just don't want even a computerized pollster to think ill of them and think, I'm tired of being told that I'm racist if I'm not willing to buy into the entire Obama agenda. So I, even if that's a 3 or 4% phenomenon, it's enough to inflate Obama's poll numbers, and I believe that is what has happened. So we'll see what happens, and of course, on as the election draws nearer, make sure you stick with us through the weekend, and we have some very special shows planned on Monday and on Tuesday and on Wednesday morning. Here's my prayer. I have many prayers lately. First, for the, the, our fellow countrymen up in the Northeast who are, are hurting and face great loss as a result of Hurricane Sandy. But then if I can come a few rungs down on the ladder on a significant scale, uh, please let's not wake up on, on Wednesday morning with some electoral mess. Let's not have the electoral college tie. Let's not have the deadlines in Ohio or power outages in Pennsylvania. Let's just please have a clean result that we can take and run with into whatever future lies ahead for us. And whatever that future holds, we'll be here in the talk show universe chronicling it on The Mark Davis Show, 7 to 10 a.m., right here on 660 a.m. The Answer. And thanks for listening and for watching here at 660 a.m. The Answer.com.